Hello and welcome back to Let's Develop Code Hunt. As you know, we're on the finishing line in Sector 14, that's where I left off last time, and I must confess that in the meantime I solved the rest of the tasks because uh, some of those really took me some time to figure it out. I did not record all of it, but I'm going to replay uh, the levels from 3 to 9 throughout the next episodes to show you guys how I uh, went about them and how I found the solutions. So let's start with level 3. It originally took me like 41 attempts to get this right. So the first or the third puzzle rather gets in two integers and is supposed to return a bool. Okay, so what I did to solve this task was go about uh, the same way as as I did in many levels before, just type cases and say, okay, 4x equals 336 and f equals 2, return true, 4x equals 1 and f equals 1, return true, for, oh no, false it is, right? Yeah, false it is. For x, sorry, x equals 33 and f equals 33, return false also. And I went about that track for quite some time to um, get to more results. Um, at some point I started to uh, go for different uh, x values for the same value of f, so I did stuff like saying, okay, if f equals 1 and x equals 1, then return whatever, let's assume true, and a couple of more values here, like 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and I did the same for 2 and for 3 and for 4. So let's say 2, 3, 4. And I compile that to just get an overview over the cases where this uh, function is supposed to return true and the cases where it's supposed to return false. Um, Unfortunately, it did not generate test cases for all the things I tried out here, but only for some. Um, and it somehow has the tendency to uh, generate test cases for 33. Uh, don't know, don't know why. I have really no clue why that is the case, but it's generating lots of them. Okay, but one thing I found out that for f equals 1, it seems to return false like always. So we have one condition where it says if f equals 1, just return false. And we ignore this letter part here down. Okay, then for 2, it occurred to me that I was supposed to return true for every even number. So I'm supposed to return true for 336, for 6, for 2, for 4. So every multiple of 2 is where, where I am supposed to return true. So this is something like return x modulo f, in this case 2, equals 0. So I have this part, and if I actually look at 3, do I have sufficient test cases for 3 here? No, I don't have, but if I would generate more, I would find the same pattern. So if the number here in front is dividable by 3, then I'm returning true if f is 3, and if it's not divisible like here, then dividable, sorry. Um, then I'm supposed to return false. So I actually have the same pattern here um, for uh, for f equals three, 
And then something else I found over time is that for the value 4, let me just regenerate that, maybe get some more, uh, some better test cases to explain the scenario. Something more with 4, so for this test case with f equals 4, this falls. And maybe we get another one. Let's wait for a second to, to get my point over a little better. I could generate more cases here, then at some point I would get more, but I don't think it makes sense to do that for, for, for making the point. But a second, a second one would be nice. Um, especially it would be nice to get a multiple, to get x to be a multiple of 4. But I'm not sure if that's going to work. No, it's not going to work. Uh, it's not going to work, unfortunately. But believe me, um, you find out at some point that for f equals 4, you're supposed to return always false. Um, so after a while, trying that out with 5 and 6 and 7, it occurred to me that um, I'm returning always false if f is not a prime number or equal to 1. In the other cases I checked exactly this function here. So what I had to implement is a check for prime numbers uh, which is actually not that difficult. The easiest way I could think of to compute uh, whether a number is prime or not is to just check all the uh, lower numbers to say okay is prime for number n is computed by just going through all the numbers okay starting by 2 uh, all the numbers smaller than n actually I could go for n divided by 2 here but anyways um, this is not performant anyway but it works to, and to say if n is dividable by i not 2 0 um, then I'm returning false here because it's not a prime and if it's not dividable by any number uh, then it's obviously a prime so I return true. Um, and then I can use that to implement this check up here to say okay in case this is a prime, f is a prime and f is not 1, that's a special case, I'm going to return x modulo f equals 0 0, why I'm typing 2 here all the time, and in all other cases I'm going to return false. I can remove all that stuff here, and I can save this and recompile this, and it will solve our actual task. Um, and despite this helper function I've written down here that uses up quite a bit space, I'm going to get the full skill rating for this solution. Uh, I would be really interested if you guys have a, a simpler solution, a way to calculate if some number is prime. Maybe there's some library method I'm not aware of that can compute that for me. Maybe there's one on C-sharp, I don't know. Um, so if you have an idea how to compute that nicer, and I'm not, I'm not talking about uh, more efficient algorithms to check for prime, because I know they are there. Um, but they are more complex to implement, so I would probably not get the full skill rating for them. Uh, I'm really talking about an easy way using using native stuff to implement that. So if you guys have any idea, uh, just let me know. But for me, that solved the task and gave me the full skill rating, so I'm content. This is it for today. Thanks a lot for watching. If you liked it, please give me a thumbs up. If not, drop me a comment or send me a message. Let me know what you think. And have a look at my channel and the other things I'm doing. Maybe there's something interesting for you. So this is goodbye for now and hope to see you next time.